here's our next project. This little bench, my mom's neighbor was actually throwing it away. We're gonna have to pause for the pity because he's gonna be my helper today. He hasn't been in a video in a while. <laughs> Uh, my mom's neighbor was throwing this away so she called me and she's like do you want this i think you can do something cute with it and i said absolutely of course i want it so this is what we're going to be making over today um this front little piece was actually rotten it was on there whenever my mom dropped it off my husband just ripped it right off because it was very sad and falling apart so this thing is very filthy <laughs> there he goes because there are kids walking behind the house and he's gonna go be a jerk <laughs> oh they got so scared of him my dog is such a jerk anyways here is um there's like a cute little step underneath I don't know if I'm gonna like keep this trim part on I might just get rid of that and have like a top and then a bottom part of the bench I don't know yet we're gonna find out but this thing's super filthy so let's get it cleaned and get it sanded <music> While I'm cleaning it, I can tell this one is coming up even more. And I don't know, like this doesn't look that good. It looks a little rotten down here. Sorry, the dog, he, he's not letting me. I have to pet him. <laughs> you can tell that it's like rotten on the sides here. I'm gonna try and sand it down. This was definitely more work than I was expecting already. I have wood in my garage to add some new boards to that bottom there, so. We'll see if it gets to be too much. I might have to scrap this project, but fingers crossed we can come up with something and make it work. <laughs> You just gonna stare at me? Yeah? Okay. Act like you're not there. I don't see you. Yeah, I don't see you at all. <laughs> oh, here he comes. There he is. <laughs> Once everything was taken apart, we went into the garage using my palm sander and this 100 grit sandpaper, and I started sanding down all of the boards. I sanded and sanded and sanded. <laughs> it took quite a while. So I started this project on a Friday night and the last thing I wanted to do for the evening was make a few small repairs. So this piece of wood was split. I just grabbed my wood glue, put it down in between the two parts of the wood, and then I grabbed a clamp and held that together to let it dry overnight. Next morning, we are going to take this off. Let's see, I think. Oh, I don't know if I went down far enough with the glue. Oh no, I think it's good. All right, so we will sand that down. I thought the back of this bench was super adorable to begin with, but very fall, and I wanted to make it a little bit more neutral and able to be used year round. Since some of my boards were really ruined, I eliminated what I could, but I really wanted to replace at least one of these fence posts so that I could have three on each side. And I had a piece of scrap wood in my garage that was the perfect width of um, the original fence posts. So I just cut them down. I drew, I traced out one of the fence parts, cut it down, and then <laughs> this is a terrible angle with my jigsaw. <laughs> I don't know why I set my camera there. It was just shaking all over the place. But now we can finally move on to priming. And I'm using my Zinzer bin primer here just to make sure that this is going to hold up in the element since it is technically meant to be a porch bench. I did just put one coat of the primer on all of my wood pieces. After the primer dried, we can move on to our paint and I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral. I know, 
so neutral, so different for me, but I love this color. And I gave two coats to all of the boards. Next, we can start reassembling. So for the bench seat, I ended up eliminating one of those boards and going down to just three. And I actually ended up using the wood bench boards that were on that bottom layer of the original bench because those ones were in the best shape. So using my square here, I am just um, making sure that my boards in that brace piece underneath are lined up nice and square. And then I'm using my brad nailer to secure them down. Then we can start adding those side fence pieces back on. I just put the two tallest ones exactly where they were originally, and then I used a medium one and a small one from the original piece. Well, I did have to recreate one. Can you tell which one it is? I did decide to stagger the fence boards a little bit differently than the original. So I did wanna cut them down, but not until after I had attached them to the back and the seat of the bench. So that way I would know exactly where I needed to cut them down. And then I just used my T-square, drew a line, and using my circular saw, I cut them down. Now, after I did this, hindsight's 2020. I added some wood glue because it was a little bit wobbly, the legs here, but I probably should have done that and then cut it down. It would have made my life a lot easier, but I just clamped it together for a few hours and that did the trick. Next, I took some wood filler and I did add a front little piece here to the front of the bench seat and I'm just filling in those brad nails. I didn't fill in the ones that were on the seat itself though. I liked the way those looked. Next, if you remember my bathroom renovation, you know I have this giant gallon of joint compound still left over, not even halfway gone through. So we are gonna use this to create a raised stencil. Now I added in a little bit of ivory chalk paint just to brighten up that joint compound a little bit so that it wasn't so off white. And then I also added in a little bit of this moss green color by Waverly. I wanted it to have kind of an ombre effect. So I did not actually mix that green into the paint. I just swirled it a few times. And then I started taking my little plastic palette knife here while the paint was just slightly swirled together. And then I very lightly and thinly spread it over top of my stencil. I didn't want this to be a very raised stencil, so I did just keep going over it and smoothing it out a little, and that also helped to blend that green color into the joint compound, but also make it look a little more ombre because it wasn't entirely blended together. Oh wow. That looks so pretty. I don't know if it's picking up on camera, but it has like just a hint of green in it. And I love it. Oh my gosh. I continued working my stencil all the way around the back part of my bench seat. I just, did just do this sparingly. I didn't want too much to be on there. I didn't want it to be too busy. And on this section, you can see I'm overlapping two boards. So I did just take a toothpick and pull out some of that joint compound so that you could see that space in between my boards. And I love the way this turned out. For this next section, I didn't end up loving the way it turned out. It was a pretty large piece of the stencil and going to be like the focal point. So since it's joint compound, it was super easy to just wipe it away and start over again. And for this part, there was a bird on it and I wanted that bird to be blue to stand out a little bit more from the greenery. So I wasn't happy with it the first time. I had just put way too much joint compound on and it looked a little bit sloppy. So I started over again again and made the joint compound a lot thinner and spread it out a lot more. And I'm so happy that I started over with this part. Next, 
Next, I'm taking the Waverly White Wax. This is the first time I have used this, but I've seen a ton of creators using white wax on projects lately, and I just love the way it looks. So I started adding the white wax to that roof looking part of the bench. You can see two of the roofs that have the white wax and two that don't. I think it's a subtle difference, but I like it. I think it helps like tie everything together. And then I'm going to do the fence sides as well. I did end up adding two layers of the white wax because I found out the first time that I was wiping it off a little too quickly and it wasn't leaving behind as much white as I had wanted it to. I wanted there to be a visible difference between the mineral color part of the bench and then where I had added the white wax. So adding a second layer, letting it dry a little bit longer before wiping it off did the trick. And then I just touched up the mineral paint where I got some of that white wax on to the bench seat or the bench back. Next, it's time to seal this baby up. So I'm using my Minwax Polyacrylic in the clear matte finish, and I am using two different brushes for this part, and you'll see why here in just a second. So I'm using my natural bristle brush for most of this, and I'm just taking a thin coat of the poly acrylic, and I'm going over the entire back, over top of the joint compound and everything. Now, when I do get to that detailed part, I just go really gently so that I'm not knocking any of that joint compound off, but we do still wanna make sure that it is sealed in there really well. So you don't wanna get any drips and that polyacrylic is pretty thin and that is why I go in with this second brush to kind of dry it off a little bit and make sure that nothing is just seeping down into those little crevices and going to cause a drip. Then I just sealed in the seat portion of this bench and that was it for this one. I love the way this turned out. I really thought about keeping it, but I just have absolutely no room and nowhere to put it. So I'm gonna have to list it for sale. what you think of this transformation. Do you like the white wax? Have you ever tried it? Do you like doing a raised stencil? What do you think of these techniques? And I'll see you in the next one.